Hey guys, how are you doing? So, we're back here again today testing another knife. <clears throat> now, this knife was gifted, gifted to me from a very good friend of mine, Gary, and it's a Sigmora. Uh, the Sigmora, it's made in 3V steel, okay? It's made by the Black Feather Knife Company, okay? And uh, it's the concept of the Sigma 3 Survival School. So, basically, what is it? I suppose. Uh, an unbreakable more as well, I would consider it. So to give you an idea of dimensions, there it is beside the Mora Garborg, okay? So approximately a four inch blade, three millimeters thick. It has a, an exposed pommel with a, a kind of a scraper on it that is particularly good for acquiring tinder, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna put my Garborg away now and I'll talk to you a little bit about it. Uh, 3V steel, as everybody knows, is exceptionally tough. It's very, very tough steel. Um, it has a 90 degree spine. And, uh, you know, I would call this, rather than a bushcraft knife, of course it's a bushcraft knife, but because of the integrity of the construction, I call this a small survival knife, okay? And this knife, I've been using it an awful lot now. Uh, I, I, I can't. I can never give an opinion on a knife within a week or two. I have to use it and use it and use it. And uh, this is great. Very comfortable grip. Uh, I like the exposed pommel on a knife because you can hammer it and use it as a chisel. And as I said, for me, a survival knife is is defined defined by structure and integrity rather than actual size of blade. Uh, and this is pretty much near. I think unbreakable. So we're going to do a bit of battening. Um, I have some very seasoned wood here that's gnarly and uh, we'll give it a shot and see how we get on <coughs> so like with anything you always have to make sure that your knife you have enough exposed outside of the knife to handle whatever you're battening uh, regardless of the size of your blade and you can batten quite large pieces of timber with a small knife if you slice the pie okay so we've gone through a pretty gnarly bit there so what I mean by slicing the pie is you just take edges off it and work your way down okay I I'm a big fan of large knives as everybody knows but I also like small knives as well uh, and yes a large knife can do what a small knife can do but when you're cutting triggers uh, carving out triggers for traps and stuff like that it's certainly an awful lot more fun to do with a smaller knife okay and if you're set up with an axe a small axe or a hatchet and maybe a backhoe saw and you have this knife it's not going to be survival, it's going to be survival. But I do believe uh, a survival knife or a bushcraft knife, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, I don't use the term. But I, I, I think when you have a knife that's of near uh, unbreakable structure, it really is a survival knife. Whereas I would consider me personally something like a Puko more m more akin to being a um, bushcraft knife with a rat tail tang and whatnot, you know. Now this stuff is hard here. This is the gnarliest stuff I could find. And it's heavily seasoned. But if you take your time, <clears throat> you get there. You can see the way this is. This stuff just does not want to oblige. So I really like my cart as a handle because if you need to hit on it, you can give it a few taps and there's no harm done, you know. So 
but when you're shaking a knife through out, always make sure your hands are at the back of the blade and not in the front of it. I've seen people cutting themselves doing that, uh, removing blades that they have been battening with. Now we're hitting a very hard knot here. You can see it on this side. Okay, it's still steaming through it. So I'm gonna make up a few feathers now and I'll get back to you in a second, okay? Right, bear and block that. Thanks, Joe. So, we've been doing a few feathers there. As you can see, it works great on feathers. We have a little ember here now. Now, just going to transfer it. So, if your feathers are good enough, they should light from an ember. So all in all, very impressed with this knife. We've done a lot of uh, quite hard mat battening there with it today. It's still very, very sharp. Um, bit of green wood here. So for a small knife, if you're stripping down branches for making traps, very capable, okay? So, just going to cut out a notch seven, which is the, the notch that would be you do a lot when you're working on traps. And obviously a knife of this size and sharpness is going to excel at this kind of work. Nice clean number seven notch. Okay guys, so that's all I can tell you about the Sigmora so far. I've been using it a lot. Um, it's so handy to carry and it's, it's just a great fun knife, you know, um, and it's as, as, as a friction fire guy, you know, a, a small knife is always very, very useful. Yes, you can do it with a big knife and you can do everything that you can do with a small knife, pretty much with a big knife, with a, a smaller expenditure of energy. But when you get to the finer stuff like traps and stuff like that, it's just more fun with a knife like this. Okay, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Take care.